Hi guys, I'm back with a new main stage for MT tutorial today and I'm going to be looking at how we create one shot and sound effects instruments in EXS24 which is the sampler instrument in main stage. I'm also going to be looking in the second half of this video at Logic's sampler which is the new update that was previously EXS24. They did used to share the same plugin. Um, it's largely the same but it does look different and it has a few other features. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Mainstage, in a newer update, gains the sampler in, in place of EXS24, as has happened with Logic in the latest update. So, if you're watching this video later and you can't find EXS24, it's more than likely been replaced by sampler, and the second half of this video should help you out with that. I'm going to be putting the project links in the description, so if you want to download these instruments and try them out and see how they work, um, and see the settings that I've put, in the video, uh, in your project, then go ahead, download those, use those, um, and hopefully they can really help with that. So we're gonna go into Mainstage now and look at how we're gonna build this instrument in Mainstage in EXS24. So off we go. So I'm now here in main stage. I've got my empty concert open, ready to work with the samples. So I'm gonna add a new patch, that's what we need. And I'm gonna rename that patch shaker because we're gonna be creating an egg shaker instrument. So I'm gonna add a channel strip, the top right here, a software instrument channel strip. And then in that channel strip input, I'm gonna be choosing EXS24 sampler. Um, as I say, here we go. So this is the interface for EXS24. As you open it up, by default, EXS24 has a sine wave sound. That's because we haven't given it any audio to process, to use. So my two samples that I've got down here are two egg shakers that I've recorded myself here. Um, this is my first sample. And here is my second. So it's two different egg shaker hits, uh, and we may use both. We may just use one. We're going to look into it and, and see how we see how we get on. So as we open EXS24 again, we're going to hit Edit in the top right. That's going to take us to this window, and this window is where we can drag our audio for EXS to work with, and we can tell EXS what we want it to do with that audio and how we want it to treat it. So if I find my first sample here, egg one, I'm gonna just drag that into this window here and it's registered that audio and it's it's taking it on for the plugin. Now I'm gonna put this into a group and I'm gonna explain a little bit later why, um, but it's good to get into the habit of uh, when you're using more than one sample because you can do a lot more with it. So if we hit new group, I'm gonna rename that egg one, and I'm just gonna go back to all zones where this sample is I dragged in, and drag this into the egg one group. So now we've got in this group, our egg one sample in that group. Now, if I play the keyboard, it's registering something. It's not the sine wave anymore. It is some audio. It doesn't sound like the sample we had. It's not as long, and actually this one, is changing pitch as we move along. Now, we want it to be unpitched. A shaker has no pitch. Percussion, for the most part, has no pitch. So we want to have an unpitched sample and we want it to be a one-shot. Now, a one-shot means that when we play the note, even if we take our finger off before that sample has run its complete time, it will not cut the sample off. It will play that audio right through to the end uh, until uh, another sample is triggered. So if we're playing quickly and we release that note before the audio is finished, it will continue to play that. So what we're going to do is go into the playback window here, and we're just going to uncheck the pitch box because we don't want it to be pitched, and we're going to check the one-shot box. And what that's going to do, hopefully, as we play now, is play the sample that you heard, egg one, uh, and not play it at different pitches. So I'm playing right the way through the keyboard there, and we're getting that one sample, that one sound playing in its entirety. So there we go. In its very basic form, 
that's you sorted. You've you've got an instrument there that will play the sample that we've chosen. It will play it through to its end, and it will play it unpitched. Now, for a sound effect uh, where that's all you need, that's great. That's all. Uh, that's all finished and ready to go. The thing with a percussion instrument is we're going to want to have some sort of human element to this. Now, we can't have that with just the one sample. If I play lots of notes together, that sounds very digital, sounds very mechanic. It doesn't sound human. There are some things we can do with that to help give a bit more of a human feel to it. Now, if you remember, I had a second egg sample. So I'm going to create a new group ready for that new sample. So let's rename this egg two and I'm going to go down to my samples and drag egg two into this group so we have egg one group with egg one and egg two group with egg two I'm just going to do the same checkboxing that we did before with egg one so now this one will also play in the same way now if I play a note now it doesn't sound all that different that's because both samples are playing at the same time now and what we might want to do in this scenario where we've got two different samples is have the same notes trigger two different samples alternately. And that's kind of like a round robin situation where you're playing a note and then if you play that same note, you'll have a different sample to give it a different sound. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. So with our egg two, we've got a slightly different sound that we can play the same note over and over again and we'll have a bit more of a human feel because it won't be the same audio and over, over and over again. So if we go up here to the top left and we go to our groups window um, and then we can see that these are the two groups we created. We're just going to have to go view, view all because we need some extra options on the right hand side here. And as I scroll over, we don't need to worry about any of this. This is all fine. This For this particular instrument, of an egg shaker, that's all sorted. We're going to just select group by. This is going to tell us how we select the group that's going to play on each note that we play. So I'm going to choose group for both of these because we want the group to be the thing that's changed and selected. I'm going to set this, leave this where it is, and I'm going to choose this one, and I'm going to choose egg two. One, sorry, egg one. And what that's going to do is we're going to play this group first, uh, by default, the patch will play this group. It's then going to move to group two. When it's heard group two and we've played group two, it's going to move back to egg one, which is our first group, on alternate note presses. So that means that every time we play a note, we're going to hear a sample, play it again, we'll hear the other sample, play it again, you'll hear the first sample, and we're just going to keep moving through like that until, uh, well, forever. You know, so if I play again a set of Cs over and over again, We've now got those two different samples working together alternately. Uh, the only thing with that second sample is I think I recorded it a little bit too quiet. So over here in the vol column, volume column, we can just knock the volume of that um, egg two up a little bit more. There we go. They're about the same level. And that's how we create some round robins as well. We've got, we've got some alternate samples now for the same note. With not a lot more work, it's just an extra sample and a few more settings in the group menu. So that's, in its simplest form, how you will set that up. Now, we can go further with the XS24, and we actually will be in a future video looking at uh, pitched instruments and creating an instrument that you can play right up and down the keyboard with different pitches. We're probably recording the clock I've got behind me uh, with the different notes and creating our own XS24 instrument. But for now, for one shots and for sound effects, this will do the job. Uh, I'm going to move over into Logic now, as I said before, to look at the sampler plugin and just see how it's ever so slightly different uh, for that type of plugin, if that is to be brought back into main stage. So here in Logic now, uh, I just need to insert a new software instrument track. That's going to open a Keyscape one by default, but we're going to go to sampler, multi-sample. Um, let's go with stereo. And as you can see, it looks very different to XS24. It's got a brand new look. It's largely the same options. It's all there uh, as it was in XS24. It's just all in a slightly different place. Um, but the little bits of time I have had to work with this, it does seem to make more sense where everything is. It does flow a little better, and you can usually find what it is you're looking for quite a bit quicker. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the zone 
menu, which is kind of what we did when we opened the edit button of EXS24. And I'm just gonna get my samples again, and I'm just gonna drag those in to there. Now, if I go to my mapping option here, that's gonna bring up this, which is a bit more of a visual representation of how that sound is gonna be mapped. Before, when we had the rows and the numbers, this is just a bit more easier to see and to read. If you've ever worked with contact, it's a similar sort of look for the mapping editor there that we have inside there. So that that's uh, that's great, it's really good. So we have egg, there we go. Now, when I play notes, it's not playing the sound. Before, in EXS, when we played, it played straight away. Now here, by default, it has mapped it to this one key down here. So we hear that. Now we want it to map to every key as we did before, as EXS did by default. So we're gonna select the egg here, and the key is gonna show our key range. Now if I drag this down, you'll see that yellow box is gonna change where the uh, note will be registered when we play those notes. We drag that up, and we're just gonna cover the whole keyboard. And there we go. That's gonna fill, uh, well, we can go up further, but that's gonna fill what we need. And that's our first sample. Now we need to put our second sample in. So let's go back to our folder and put egg two in. And we've got the same thing here. So let's just change that range again. And now we've got two sample groups that are mapped over every key. We've got that same problem from before where we don't have a one shot and it is pitched to the keyboard. So to fix that, Let's select both of these, and we're gonna just change that pitch option from on to off, which is what we want. And we're gonna turn one shot on to both those groups. So you can see, with a one shot on, these have both got one shot on, and they both have pitch off. And now, we should have something that sounds a bit more like the shaker we had before. There we go. Now we still don't have that round robin, that more human sound to it because we've still got both samples playing at the same time and we want them alternate as we did before. So what we're gonna do is move into the group editor as we did before, but it's now up here on the top right. I'm gonna to go to view and just show all columns again as I did. And as we scroll along, we'll find we've now got a round robin section. Now this is gonna be a lot um, easier to set up round robin because all I'm gonna do is click on on that first group and actually right away we're off and it's sorted. So that's a much quicker way of getting that, um, that option sorted in sampler. We're ready to go and again, what I am going to do is go back to my mapping, take this second egg and I'm just gonna take the volume up again so that they're a little bit more even and we're back. And that's how we do the same thing in Sampler. So I hope that's been helpful for getting some sound effects or one shots or percussion hits into your main stage sets um, and in Sampler, which may be moved over to main stage in the future. Um, we're gonna look in a future video at kind of trying to map and sample something with a bit more of a melodic um, kind of instrument. So probably the Glock behind me here, as I said before, um, with a, a fully mapped instrument that will have lots of those pitches across the keyboard. A little bit more involved, but it's largely the same idea and the same steps, just a little bit more and a little bit further on. So watch out for that one, uh, but hopefully this has been helpful um, and thanks for watching.